In Flutter, if you are writing an app that needs to persist and query large amount of data on local device, consider using database. Flutter apps can make use of SQL database via the SQLite plugin available on pub.net. First, we will set up SQLite on our project, then we will create a database, then we will create a table and perform the create, read, update and delete features. And for the demonstration, we will create this simple to-do app. Do you want to learn Flutter in a better and faster way? Then simply join our 12-week Flutter training on heyflutter.com where you master all the Flutter topics such as Start, UI Design, State Management, Firebase, Clean Architecture, Databases and so on by watching our structured courses that help you for each topic to go from a newbie until an expert level in Flutter. Start by adding the dependencies on your pubspec.yaml file and get your package. Under your leaf folder, create model folder. Then create this to-do.dart file. Before creating the table to store information, define a to-do class that contains four pieces of data or create a to-do data class model with a unique ID, a title, a created time, and updated time of each to-do. Then under your leaf folder, create a database folder. Then create database service.dart file. Before reading and writing data to the database, we need to open connection to the database and that is what we are going to do on this file. First, create the database service class and import the necessary package. Then create the local variable database of type database of SQLite. Create the database function and we will check if the database already exists. If there is no any database, we will initialize our database or we will create our database. For that, we will create a local initialize function. But before that, let's create a full pass getter function. Here, we used the join method of pass package, which we have imported above to join the given pass, which we get from get database pass of SQLite, which will give us the default database location of the device and the database name we want to create dot db. Then finally, create the initialize function. Here, we have received the pass from the full pass and we will use open database of SQLite which will open a database at a given pass. Then specify the version of the database. As the database did not exist, we will call onCreate callback function. For that, let's create a create function, which will take two parameters and create a table for the given database using create table function of tododb class, which we will create right now. Finally, on the initialize function, return the database or return the created database. Then under the database folder, create tododb.dart file. Now let's create a table to store information about our todos. But first, make sure to import all the necessary packages. Then create a class tododb and create a table name variable with a given table name. First, let's create a create table function, which we have used it on the database service earlier. Here, we will create a table if it doesn't exist with the given table name. In our case, we create a table called todos based on our todo data class detail. Each to-do contains ID, title, created and updated type. Therefore, these are represented as four columns in the to-do table. And finally, we have used the ID as a primary key. Finally, we have created a database and a table. And it's time to read and write data. First, let's start by inserting data into a table. For that, we will create a create function, which will take a string parameter as a title. And here we have used a database where the database service dot database function will check if the database exists. If the database doesn't exist, it will initialize. Then we have used row insert of SQL lat, which will execute a row SQL insert query and returns the last inserted row. This function will create a to-do with a given title and with the current date and time with the local time zone of the device. We have created our database and tables. Now let's see how to fetch our to-dos from the table or the database. First, start by fetching all the to-dos. For this, we created fetch all. What we are doing here is we execute a row SQL query to fetch all to-dos from the database. After this, we map the fetched to-dos to our to-do Dart model. To map our fetched to-dos to our Dart model, we will create this factory method on our to-do model class, which we have created earlier. So create this factory method with the given details like this. Whenever you want to fetch one to-do from all the to-do tables, we are going to fetch it by its ID. So for this, let's create this method, fetch by ID. Here, we execute arrow SQL query to fetch a to-do, which have this exact given ID from our to-dos. We have seen how to create and fetch to-dos from our database. Now, let's see how to update our to-dos. First, create this update method. We used update from the SQL package, which will update rows 
in the database and return the number of changes made. Here, we are going to update it to do with the given ID and change or update its title using the given ID passed to the method. And here, we have specified an algorithm to use in case of conflict. Here, where is an optional where clue to apply when updating? And passing null will update all rows. And here, we have included this clue, which will be replaced by the value from this property. Finally, let's see how to delete our to-dos from our table. For this, we have created this delete method, which will take an ID as a parameter. And here, we have used row delete of SQL package, which will execute a row SQL delete query and return the number of changes made. Under your leaf folder, create this page folder. Then under the page folder, create this to-dos page.dart file. Then create this to-dos page stateful widget and create these two variables. Then create this fetch to-dos method, which will fetch all our to-dos from our database and call it inside our init state method. On our build method, we returned a scaffold and we used our floating action button to create new to-dos. For that, on the onPress property of our floating action button, we will call show dialog. And on the builder, we used create to-do widget, a widget which we are going to create right now. Before creating our widget, under your lib folder, create widget folder. Then under the widget folder, create to-do widget.dart file. Then inside the file, create this stateful widget and create these two final variables. Then initialize the widget like this. On our build method, first we created is editing a boolean value, which we are going to use it later. Then return an alert dialog widget. On the title, here we are going to use is editing a boolean variable, which we have created. Here we are going to check whether the user is editing or adding a to do. Then on the content property of the alert dialog, we use the form. And on the child properties of a form, here we used a text form field. Here we are validating and decorating the text form field. Then inside our alert dialog widget, we created two text buttons. Then back to our to do page file on our floating action button on the on press, which we have called the show dialog. And on the build on the builder properties of our show dialog, we have called create to do widget, a widget which we have created. Then on on submit properties of our widget, we will call our create method, which we have created earlier, and we will put the title. Then we will call all our to-dos to show for the user and we will navigate back. On our body properties of a scaffold, we return feature builder. And on the builder, first we check the current state and we will return circular progress indicator and we will pass our snapshot data to our to-dos variable. Then we check if our to-dos is empty. If our to-dos is empty or the user have finished or deleted or the to-dos, then we will return a text no to-dos. But if the to-dos are not empty, we will return a list view. Here on the item builder, we created a final to-do variable variable and assign to do's currently indexer to do to it and we created a final subtitle variable then parse it and assigned the current to do's updated time or created time then on the list view we returned a list type on the list title title property we assigned the currently to do title property then on the subtitle we assigned the subtitle which is the currently updated time to delete any to do we added an icon button on the trailing properties of elite style. Here we use the delete icon and on the onPress property of the icon button we called a delete method which we have created and passed it the currently indexed to do ID. To update while a user tap on any to do's or any list tile, a show dialog will pop up. And on the builder properties of a show dialog, we have called create to do widget, a widget which we have created earlier. And we have put the currently indexer to do our to do variable to to do properties of the create to do widget. Then on the submit property, we have called an update, an update method which we have created and passed the currently indexed ID and title. Then finally, we fetch all to dos and navigate back. And finally, let's run our app and let's test it. As you can see on the screen, as we are not adding any to dos before, it is returning us no to dos tag. Start by adding a to dos. For that, press the floating action button here. Add your first to do. In our case, we have added a to do one. Then press OK. As you can see here, we have added a to do one. And let's add a multiple to dos for the demonstration and we have added three more to do's so let's test the delete feature to delete any to do's what we are going to do is to press this delete icon button as you can see the to do for is deleted and let's see the update feature for that tap on the to do second and let's call it to do 24 and add 4 and press ok as you can see to do 2 is updated to to do 24 from this you can delete all the to do's and back to no to do's 